NVIDIA in the news today. Of course, we're going to be breaking this down for you guys and how this may affect Bitcoin mining and all kinds of mining in the industry. My name is Paul Barrow. Welcome back into Tech Path. I want to thank our sponsor today, and that is Uphold. If you guys are getting ready to go into crypto, now is the time to do it because right now the markets are at perfect timing, possibly going in and starting maybe your first crypto account. Choose Uphold. All you have to do is go over to their uh, website, which is just uphold.com. And you can jump in there. And if you're not ready to make a trade, you can actually earn up to 4.5% APY on your dollars right there in Uphold. Where else can you do that, guys? Can your bank pay you that? No. Go in and check them out. Use our link down below for some special offers and get started. Let's get into it today. We've got a special guest that's going to be joining us here in a minute. And uh, you guys love her, uh, Sue, uh, coming in from Hunt 8. But before we get started, I want to show you guys something here. Of course, you have uh, Jim Kramer hitting up on NVIDIA, saying NVIDIA has become a meme stock and it has to be cut back. Now, of course, what we've seen right now is the response to the on-again, off-again tariff scenario, what we can sell, what NVIDIA can sell to the Chinese and what they can't. This, of course, has caused uh, quite a bit of a rubber band effect on NVIDIA, the stock. But, uh, you know, the interesting thing here, remember, they also make GPUs for mining, and that is a very important fact. Now, I want to go to this first clip because this will get into... Where are we? Take a look. So yeah, shares down about three and a half percent right now. This is after a 8K filing. Heard from the uh, U.S. government last week saying they need a license to sell H20 chips to China. Uh, that is not happening now, or at least they need a licensing process for it. And now NVIDIA says they expect to take a five and a half billion dollar charge. You see shares moving down three and a half percent now, Melissa. An analyst estimate that it could cost them 12 to 14 billion dollars overall. It's going to motivate Chinese companies to move even more quickly in developing all alternatives for these yeah. AI chips. We are now heading into like the eye of the storm. This is going to be a storm that lasts three, maybe six months. Mm -hmm. The next few quarters you're going to have to throw out. You have to hope for a deal and some sort of negotiations with China. If you assume that this stays in its course, then the whole thesis and then it's essentially game set match. There's one chip in the world that's fueling AI revolution. It's NVIDIA. All right, so I want to bring on Sue Ennis coming in from HUD 8. Uh, she has joined us many times before talking about this very topic. How are you, Sue? I'm good and great to be back. Lots to cover. It's been a wild couple of weeks in the market. No doubt. So, Sue, a couple of points I want to hit on first, uh, because I think this does affect mining in general, just because NVIDIA being one of the purveyors of the chips that pretty much run this industry, you look at their revenue by region, and I'll zoom in on this right here so you can kind of see but that right there is January, most of which is U.S. and U.S. friendly territories. Then you get into Taiwan, which is that blue section. And then the green section right there is China. That's NVIDIA's chip sales uh, and revenue by region. Do you think this is going to have any effect on the crypto mining and AI evolution, especially around the data centers here in the United States? Or do you think NVIDIA is just going to double down and try to drive more revenue there? I think NVIDIA is going to double down and going to continue to drive revenue. So now in terms of the AI and data center space, the miners that are making that pivot, um, conversations have continued as planned. CapEx plans are continuing, the, or the conversations we're having with hyperscalers in terms of CapEx, they're planning on spending on infrastructure in order to support the servers that they are ordering from overseas or from NVIDIA uh, have not assuaged at all. Okay. Um, so we, I mean, on, on our position is we would say that this is definitely a case of the media overblowing and creating quite a bit of FUD um, because the numbers and the conversations and the contracts that we're looking at certainly have not changed. Um, I think if you also look at some of the, the numbers, for example, that Morgan Stanley has come out with. So they are still forecasting a 42 gigawatt um, dearth between power that is required and power that is available right now in the market. And yeah. a large part of that is with respect to and around uh, demand for AI training data centers. I heard a stat the other day that there's something like three or four gigawatts of chips alone that need to be plugged in within the next 18 months. So, um, you know, is NVIDIA in a hard place? I think the media would make it seem that way, but in terms of the guys who are actually ordering the chips, ordering the servers and, uh, you know, requiring power and infrastructure, those conversations have not changed. If things got really dire for NVIDIA and you look at their supply chain, you look at the potential of them reinvesting here in the United States in terms of chip manufacturing, 
and then the potential run, run rate for sales because they would be selling to companies like HUD-8 and many other miners along with the AI data centers that are growing out there. And I want to talk to you guys about, uh, to you about that because I know you have some news on that. But do you think there's enough market position right now for NVIDIA to still hold a commanding lead globally as the number one AI company? Um, I would say definitely. I mean, even if you look, like we said, at, uh, or at the chart you just showed, China showed about 13%. Like, again, what we're seeing here in terms of just figures alone and demand alone in just the US, we now have a crypto and AI czar. We have explicit executive orders coming out of the administration um, that are focused on increasing the availability of power so that the US can become leaders in the AI space. Um, I think we've seen time and time again that when the U.S. decides they're going to do something, they're going to go and do it. And so I think that um, this this change and pivot in the administration and focus on AI and the U.S. being leaders in the space, I think, is going to be uh, very bullish for NVIDIA. Uh, they also just announced that they're setting up shop a uh, manufacturing plant here in the U.S. as well. So, um, yeah, I think I, I think this idea of, you know, China um, getting in the way of their trajectory and momentum, I think is definitely overblown. Okay. All right. So I know you guys are building more facilities and you're leaning in a little bit on AI, but obviously HUD 8 is still a Bitcoin. Before we jump to that side, I want to you know hit on the, the news that came out a couple of week, weeks ago. And that, of course, was HUD 8 and Eric Trump launching American Bitcoin. So this is going to be a new standard in Bitcoin mining. Tell me what this deal consisted of first. How does this work with HUD 8 and with what the Trump family is trying to do in the crypto industry? Yeah, absolutely. So this was a pivotal evolution um, in our platform strategy. And so by carving out our mining business into a standalone entity, we effectively aligned each segment of our business with its respective cost of capital. So okay. how to think about it is HUD-8 parent company is going to be focused purely on energy and infrastructure. And some of that infrastructure may be Bitcoin mining, and we now have the holy grail of a situation, aka we have an off taker of demand. Mm -hmm. Some of that infrastructure maybe AI and uh, tr uh, AI da uh, training data centers. Some of that infrastructure one day may be green hydrogen because our whole thesis, our whole raison d'etre is that energy is scarce and that the use case of the electron will continue to evolve. And we use Bitcoin mining to capture cheap megawatts at scale and then find the next highest use case for that electron. So when we find a site where the power is cheap and we think there's a ton of opportunity, but right now the best use case is just Bitcoin mining, we've got that client, American Bitcoin, who will come in, bring their servers, and then we effectively have a hosting contract with them. So it was really about smart risk segmentation for us because the cost of capital, if you're trying to grow the world's leading energy and infrastructure business, that's a much different cost of capital. That's a much different right. investor and risk appetite versus a, a, a mining business. So uh, American Bitcoin is going to be a subsidiary of HUD-8. We own 80% of it. Uh, Eric Trump and his family and, um, sorry, ADC, a company that they started, owns 20%. Um, and, you know, we are insanely excited about what this means for not only HUD-8, but also American Bitcoin. So um, Eric and his family bring uh, evangelism, the brand, additional capital connections that, you know, perhaps we don't already have. And, you know, we're really excited to be partnered with an administration that's incredibly bullish on this industry. You know, here's Asher. He's kind of hitting on the future of Bitcoin mining is here. And you guys, of course, have, have really got some pretty interesting sites. What is this site right here that I'm looking at? Looks yeah, very so believe, sustainable. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I believe you're looking at Vega. Um, and that is the site where we are standing up direct liquid to chip cooling and innovating on the traditional form factor of Bitcoin mining. So we're going from the traditional form factor in Bitcoin mining is like a shoebox and a bunch of chicken wire. Um, and yeah. we are effectively designing a U-form traditional data center factor with direct liquid to chip cooling that we designed ourselves yeah. at 400,000 per megawatt. Because the other sort of piece of where HUD-8, outside of just building one of the world's largest energy infrastructure operators, the other place where we are competing is on innovation. Because the data center space has not had to innovate for over 20 years. And I'm talking Bitcoin right. mining, I'm talking traditional data centers. And so one of the first areas where we found an opportunity to disrupt was direct liquid to chip cooling. The future of chips, whether it's AI, H100s, whether it's you know ASIC chips, is cooling. Um, and so we're pretty we're pretty excited to to take that sort of 
Elon Musk SpaceX 2005 first principles approach that he took to rocket disruption, okay. we're going to be the data center space. And we've got a Very moon shot. Cool. Yeah, we're pretty excited about it. So that's I that's gotta, one of our innovation. I got to get in and uh, sit down with Asher, I think, because this would be, a, I think, a really good conversation. You guys are right here in Miami, so it'd be an easy trip down to, to see him. Let's get into another point that's happening right now. When you look at the growth of the sector from a crypto side of things, and you consider both GPU and VPU operations and what that might look like, I wanna play a clip for you because there is a problem that seems to be brewing right now within the Ethereum ecosystem that I think maybe could be solved by what is happening in the mining area as well. Let me play this for you. Here we are in 2025. We need to accelerate the computation with um, some extra hardware. One is GPUs, and finally we have ASICs that are specialized for a particular problem. Our GPU solution achieved 0.5 seconds. Um, CPUs for this type of problem took tens of minutes. Last year, uh, Justin Drake, he introduced this idea of beam chain. So the state of the art today, like right now, that doesn't uh, meet the requirement of under 12 seconds for the generation time for Ethereum blocks. So a couple of months ago, Snarkify announced that we will have uh, real time, meaning less than 12 seconds, uh, block proving by the end of June. I would be very happy to bet someone that before January of next year, that real time proving will be a practical reality. Jim, would you take that bet? No, I would not take that bet. An end user is not gonna have a rack of GPU equipped servers or something available to them, but if you can get the entire proof running, you know, real time with, with less hardware, then that's really powerful. So this could change out the infrastructure of what's required, especially in the Ethereum ecosystem. Do you think there's any opportunity here for you guys as far as HUD-8 is concerned? Yeah, look, I mean, again, we are not, we are compute agnostic, I would say. Mm -hmm. Again, energy and infrastructure is the core of our uh, business. And so is there a world where perhaps this would be compute that we would play in? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think the bigger so what, the bigger conversation that is nice to see about this is Ethereum really has, um, has sort of fallen behind a little bit, right? Like right. in terms of scalability, in terms of uh, adoption, in terms of um, costs, you know, Solana, some of these rollups have also really sort of stealing, stolen its thunder. And so I think that this would be pretty meaningful for the adoption of the of the Ethereum ecosystem for sure to see some of these developments happen because they're solving for a real problem that Ethereum is having right now. Yeah, well, I think the key here is they, they saw this kind of coming, so the plan was a little bit in play. Uh, it appears that they might have a solution. Let me play this clip for you. We have CPUs, we have GPUs. Should there be something at all for next-gen cryptography? How about we build this? You know, the reaction was, not very positive. A lot of people told us that we were insane. We finally did it. It's the VPU. How good is this chip? You may be shocked to find out NVIDIA has 76 times more transistors than we have. We're kind of like fighting with one hand tied behind our back. One gigahertz versus two gigahertz because they're on three nanometers, so two hands, right? It's over 100x <laughs> disadvantage. Well, we win. We fucking did this. The MSRP might change as demand grows. We anticipate that we're gonna hear a lot from people now that you know we're at this stage. We're going to have a cloud of VPUs. We're gonna mass produce those boxes. We're gonna put those boxes in the data center. We're also gonna have a bunch of partners. We're going to release all of this this year. And so by the end of the year, you'll see real-time ZK processing proofs for the Ethereum ecosystem. This is you know, what we're releasing this year. About 10 times the performance in our next gen, at least. We're only gonna get better and better and better by multiple orders of magnitude. And by the way, this is conservative. That is our prediction. All right, that came in from uh, Fabric, which is the VPU manufacturer that was essentially propped up by the Ethereum Foundation and put into a position to solve the problem that they saw coming down the pipe, to your point exactly. If you see that kind of implementation, now granted, they have to be able to manufacture and scale and then also accelerate on that chart that they were kind of referencing and, and bragging about that doesn't exist yet, but will it? Maybe. Question, my question to you is, do you guys stockpile some VPUs now that we start to see this for the, the Ethereum ecosystem? Is that maybe a play for HUD-8? Yeah, so, so no, parent company is going to be just focused on architecture and energy uh, in order to power the future of compute. So 
I think though, when we talked about some of the innovation that we're focused on, this is a perfect example of how the mm -hmm. use cases for the electron, what compute looks like and the hardware that it comes in is going to continue to evolve. And so you wanna make sure right. that you've got the power and that you also have flexibility in your infrastructure in order to support those future uh, those future use cases and evolution of how the electron is getting used. So that's that's HUT 8's core for focus. Now, we do have a business called HiRise.ai that is focused, uh, that is like a GPU as a service business. Is there a world where that business is focused on actually buying the servers and compute? Potentially, would they buy some of these GPUs? Yeah, that's definitely within the realm of possibility. But HUT 8 Parent Co., we're just going to continue to find ways to power future compute use cases like the VPUs. Well, and I think that to your point, the key here is all going to be power consumption, power management, and it's going to be the best players out there that have the cleanest and most sustainable. Plugging and playing in all this technology from what's happening with NVIDIA, what could be happening with Fabric to kind of expand the ecosystem for ETH, I think to your point, flexibility and scalability is going to be a key thing uh, for going forward. So maybe, you know, HUD8 could be leading the way right there. You guys are making a lot of very interesting moves. So I'm glad we had a chance to bring you in. If you guys want to follow Sue, get out there on X. You can get her at Big Suey right there. She's always fun to follow on X. You've got some entertaining tweets and always very uh, educational as well. So Sue, thank you so much for coming in today. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Bye guys. You bet. See ya. All right, you guys, if you are not in the Diamond Circle, get in right now. It's our own private group, and you can join for free. It's that simple. It's very easy to do, and it's a personal email that goes out to you guys. Uh, we give you kind of an insight, a little bit more of our research that we do here in the studios, but also kind of an alignment of my strategies overall, of how I look at the market, what I look at from both a macro side, but also a technology side, which I think a lot of people don't necessarily take into consideration. Follow me on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.